Congressman Adam Smith of Washington State, the top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee. And Congressman, for the record, we usually have you here to talk pure policy and, and foreign policy and armed services, um, not politics. But this is a, a, a fraught moment in our, in our democracy. Where are you on this issue? What's your message to President Biden and to your fellow Democrats? Well, look, I think he should step aside. I think it's become clear that he's not the best person to carry the Democratic message. And here's the thing. We have an incredibly strong message and record to run on. And in all you know, uh, respect to the president, he's done a great job, okay? When you look at where the economy was when he came in, how our economy dealt with COVID so much better than any other economy in the world, the progress that we're making, the unemployment rate, you know, stock market. Look, there's a lot of work left to do. Housing's too expensive, income inequality is still too great, but we've made progress on that too. That the lowest black unemployment, black poverty rate came under this president. I saw a report today in the New York Times that some of those you know, areas that have seen the manufacturing jobs flee are actually starting to get better. Okay, And then on the other side, you've got Donald Trump, who's a complete disaster. Project 2025 and his promise to cut taxes more for the rich and corporations while raising tariffs to tax poor people. We got a good message. The president has shown he is not capable of delivering that message is this in an effective way. Just because, not I shouldn't say just, because that 90 minute debate was a lot, but yeah. is, is, it, is this based entirely on that event? No. No. What is I mean, it? There was concerns leading up to it in the terms of the president's ability to deliver a message, and it hasn't gotten better since the debate. The overall package shows we got a great message. I mean, when you looked at that debate, what all of us were feeling, my son who's in high school was, you know, we, 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 we should, oh, sorry, he's in college now, but, you know, any good debater could go back on what Donald Trump is saying. And, and so many missed opportunities were out there. Um, and we want to deliver an effective message. And then there are the health care concerns. And look, a lot of Democrats are saying, well, let's move on. Let's stop talking about it. We're not the ones who are bringing it up. We're not the ones who said any time, any place. And only Joe Biden was on that stage with Donald Trump. Our constituents are bringing it up. The country is bringing it up. And the White House, sorry, campaign strategy of be quiet and fall in line and let's ignore it, simply isn't working right now. Uh, one of your colleagues talked to me on background and said that the problem with this issue with President Biden is, and I'm paraphrasing what this member of Congress said to me, is every American has seen this in their exactly. own life. Everybody knows what a confused older person who is having struggling with cognition issues, what it's like, and it's not consistently 100% 24-7 like that, but it is a process. Yeah, no, and, and, and look, the president, as I said, has done a very good job as president. We've got a great record to run on. He's just not able to deliver it right now, and the healthcare, is, and it's a distraction. We should be talking about the record. We should be talking about Trump, but you saw the press conference. Yeah. We're not the ones who are forcing it. And sorry, I gotta make one other point. Yeah. So the president talked today about how now it's all the elites yeah. who are trying to force him out. Right. Let's remember what happened in 2020. Okay, the president did not run a great primary campaign. He lost badly in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. He came out of Nevada and Bernie Sanders looked like the presumptive nominee. And this exact same group of people the elites. that the president is now deriding as elites, and by the way, they're not. They're right. Democrats, okay? Their party operatives, their donors, their volunteers decided, and to all the Bernie supporters out there, I'm not judging this positively or negatively, they decided they didn't want Bernie Sanders to be the nominee. They decided that Joe Biden would be the better nominee, and credit, again, to the president. He decided that because he did eight years as vice president. He did the years in the Senate. He had the record to be a strong president. And so they, through their support behind Joe Biden, yeah. and Pete Buttigieg, and Elizabeth Warren, and Mike Bloomberg, and Amy Klobuchar, and I may be forgetting a few others, stepped aside right. for the candidate who was better. This myth that somehow Joe Biden came in and rescued us, it has been a nationwide movement since Donald Trump was elected president. And in 2020, that nationwide movement said, Joe, you're the best guy, let's go. Right now, they don't think he is. So what happens then in this scenario that he steps down, which we should note, he shows absolutely no indication. And, and, I, and I don't think it's just faking it for the cameras. No. All the reporting indicates that he, uh, the first lady, Hunter, and some of his top aides are just 100% behind him and, and think that this is, this is just the elites going after the Bidens again. But in, put that aside right. for one second. What is the plan? What would the Two plan quick be? things. One, I hope, and I completely agree with Adam Schiff and Mike Quigley and others who've said, 
let's put Joe Biden's ego aside. As candidates, there's this tendency to believe, oh, it's all about us. No, the candidate is always secondary. The primary thing is the, is the constituents you're asking to represent. So I would ask them to put their personal feelings aside for Joe Biden. This isn't personal. It wasn't personal in 2020 when all of those people said it should be Joe. It was business. You're the guy we think can win. So I, I'm pleading with them, all right? I hear you. I think you're probably right. I'm pleading with them. Take a step back. Look at what is best for the party, what is best for the country. What happens? Personally, I think Kamala Harris would be a much better, stronger candidate. And because she is constitutionally his second, that's the way it's supposed to work. If the president is no longer able, Kamala Harris is there with- Oh, you think he should step down from the presidency? No, 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 no. Okay, but- I'm talking about within the, within the primary process. The primary process. So right. she- They ran as a team this right. year from the very start, okay? So you don't agree with uh, Congressman Jim Clyburn who said there should be at least some sort of mini primary process so that she's not anointed, so hey, there- no. let, let, let me say, I, there's a thousand different ways to do it and that's fine, okay? The president is not the nominee. He got a little testy this morning uh, when I think Joe said he was the presumptive nominee. Yeah. He is, he's the presumptive nominee. And let me also say, and I put this in a statement that I'm about to put out, if we get through the convention, he's the nominee, I'm all in. Look, elections are a choice. And in this field, even in the current situation, Joe Biden, far and away the best candidate. But I know in my heart and my soul and my brain that we can do better and I know what the stakes are, all right? And you've seen it, even after the debate, he didn't come out and show that he could deliver the message. They didn't address the healthcare issues. So I just passionately believe that we can pick a better candidate. Like I said, I think it should be Harris. Ultimately, that's up to the delegates. What do you we'll think, make the selection. What do you make of the fact that there's this visit by a Parkinson's doctor with the White House physician and they won't answer questions about it? I know you don't know the details about it. Well, here's the thing. It just seems to me, I've been in this town a little bit, you too, and like you have an issue about a candidacy based on ability and health concerns. So what do you do? You try to resolve them. One, right. You put the candidate out for two hours and let them take questions from the press, show not just phone interviews and not just, I mean, George did a great job, but 22 minute taped interview is not what we're talking about. A full hour and a half, two hours to take questions, blah, blah, blah. And you put out all the health records, yep. but they're not doing either of those. Yeah, it's, it, it, I don't know. It's not good, I know that, because the doubts linger, the lack of transparency lingers. And again, the president has done a great job Okay, we have a great record to run on, but what we've seen over and over again, he can't deliver that message and the questions about his health. Again, I did this, all this, oh, Democrats should just shut up and get in line, don't question. We're not the ones bringing it up. Right. The president's debate performance and what has happened since then, as well as some incidents before that, are bringing it, we have to deal with it. And here's another point, it undermines our credibility. Now, it doesn't all have to be on the candidate. Messengers can be good, Wes Moore, Shapiro, Gretchen Whitmer, Gavin Newsom, we got a really good messengers out there. But your credibility takes a blow if you can't answer questions about the president's health and his ability to deliver a message. If you act, ah, not important, shouldn't talk about it. So I just, look, I think we can do better. I don't know what's gonna happen, like I said. Gets a nomination, I'm all in. Right now, just like in 2020, when everyone said Joe Biden's the guy, let's get behind him, I think we need a different choice if we're gonna be able to beat Donald Trump. And that's what matters. It's not about Joe Biden. It's not about individuals. It's about making sure we move this country in the right direction going forward. Congressman Adam Smith, Democrat of Washington State, thanks so much uh, for being here. Thanks for your candor. Also, right. I appreciate it. Democratic Congressman Seth Moulton, he's calling on President Biden to step aside as the 2024 Democratic presidential nominee. And Congressman, I so much appreciate your time. You hear Leader Jeffries uh, speaking out now, telling Armanu Raju that he does support the president. Uh, his position has not changed on that. Does it give you any pause in how strongly you have come out in the opposite direction? No, it doesn't give me pause. Uh, I, this was a hard decision for me to reach because I love Joe Biden. He's an amazing president. He's even been a great mentor and friend to me personally. I used to have breakfast with him with, when he was the vice president. He, he coached me on, on being a freshman in Congress. But we need to win this election. The reality, though, is that for the president, he's got to be all in until he's not. And I think a lot of party leaders feel the same way. For us in the rank and file, we're trying to be a little bit more honest and, 
and, and really just push in the right direction here. I hear from constituents all over the country right now that we're desperate to win this election and we've got to make sure we have the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump. So you did also hear, Congressman, the White House press briefing, that back and forth regarding a neurologist's visits, visits, plural, to the White House. So I, I guess just asking you, and I understand, you know, you've already made it clear what you think the president should do, that you th think he should step aside. But what more do you want to hear from the White House right now about President Biden's health? And in some ways, I think the health is a distraction. We need a campaign plan. We need to understand what he's going to do differently to win. Because right now, we're behind in the polls, especially in the key swing states uh, the president needs to carry this election. And those polls got worse after the debate. So we need to see a change in course, you know, not just, not just one pre-taped interview over seven days over a week after the disastrous debate, but a real new plan to turn this around. Because when your strategy isn't working, you can't just double down on the same strategy. You have to have a new strategy. You have to have a new plan. And we haven't so heard that yet from the White House. So is there something that he could say that would, when I, and I understand that, is there something that he could say, though, that would change your conclusion here, right? Because you've been one of the few that have come out and, and you did so, even though many others uh, either weren't willing to or were afraid to, right? But you did speak out. Is there something he could do or say at this point that would change your mind? He really has to demonstrate that he can make a big comeback in the polls, because at the end of the day, defeating Donald Trump is what matters. It matters for not just the Democratic Party, but for our country, for our democracy. This is, this is a convicted criminal who incited a mob to storm the Capitol, something that's never happened before in American history. And now he gets blanket immunity from the Supreme Court. The second term of Donald Trump could be far, far worse. So what Democrats want, what I want, is a clear plan to win and a candidate who can demonstrate that he can go toe to toe with Donald Trump and defeat him. I mean, look, Aaron, this really should be easy. He's a convicted criminal. A lot of Republicans don't like Donald Trump. So we should be way ahead in the polls right now. It's gravely concerning to me that we're behind and we're getting further behind after the debate. So Jill Biden, the first lady, obviously has been a steadfast defender of her husband by his side. And she said something today that I wanted to play for you, Congressman. Here she is. Joe has made it clear that he's all in. when you talk about those breakfasts you had that he was a mentor so you know you know him personally how important is jill biden right now to the president and to his decision making i think she's incredibly important she's an amazing woman a great leader and someone that the president obviously listens to carefully uh, but what i would say in response to that clip with all due respect to the president is this is not about you you know, my, my first introduction to serving the country was in the, in the Marines. And I try to carry those values now into politics. And one of the things the Marines always drill into you is this is not about you. It's about your fellow Marines. It's about your country, putting the country first. And that's what we're asking the president to do. I, I know he loves his job. I know he loves serving the country. And I know he's done amazing things for America, not only as president, but for decades in the Senate. But this is a team sport. And Joe's the captain of our team. He needs to decide what's best for Democrats and for the country, not just for himself. All right, well, Congressman Moulton, I appreciate your time and thoughts tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. And now I want to go straight to the Democratic Congressman Robert Garcia of California. He is on the Biden campaign's National Advisory Board. So, Congressman, I appreciate your time, and, and you had a chance there to listen to Seth Moulton. He wants Biden to step aside. He explains why. Why do you think that is wrong? Well, thanks. I, I have a lot of respect for all my colleagues and their perspectives and opinions. Um, I am 100 percent with uh, President Biden and, and the vice president. Um, actually, just just uh, not too long ago, our speaker, Hakeem Jeffries, reinforced his support for the president. And I think the president, as he has said himself, is the one person in this country 
that has actually defeated Donald Trump. He's done it before. He'll do it again. He, of course, was greatly underestimated during his last election, during the primary. People counted him out and he came back and won those yeah. primaries and then beat Donald Trump. And so uh, I think that the caucus is uniting and hardening around him, supporting the president. You're seeing it in the grassroots. The folks that I talk to across this country, uh, they support Joe Biden and they want us to stick with him. And we certainly are. So you mentioned Hakeem Jeffries, and he had, uh, you know, been listening to to all of you in, in the caucus. He had been listening. He had said nothing. Now, as you point out, he's telling Armani Raju that he does back the president. Now, you heard uh, Congressman Moulton say that doesn't sway him, that that he has he, he feels the way he feels. But from others you've spoken to, will Hakeem Jeffries taking a stand and backing the president make a difference? Of course. I mean, any time that you have Hakeem Jeffries, the, the next Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, Barack Obama, Jim Clyburn, uh, the leadership of our party uh, uniting once again and standing with the president and the vice president, uh, that's incredibly important. But, but more importantly, it's the grassroots voters. Let's not forget that the president had his absolute best fundraising numbers right after the debate. We're hearing from grassroots voters across the country they are standing with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And so absolutely, I think um, I think ha having Hakeem's support is going to be critical. And I'm seeing today, I mean, the base of this party is, um, is our Black voters, our Latino voters. Those members, those voters are coming out strongly, and we are hearing from them to reinforce our support for the president. So I think what you're seeing now especially is this fighting spirit in Joe Biden. I think what he did today, what he's been doing the last couple of days and really fighting back, punching back, punching back at Donald Trump, who has been horrific for this country, is exactly the kind of fighter that we're gonna see for the rest of the campaign. All right, now you are also on the House Oversight Committee, so I want to ask you about this, Congressman. The chairman of your committee, James Comer, is asking President Biden's Dr. Kevin O'Connor to come in for an interview. Now, he asked for that before the White House briefing today, and in that briefing, they would not confirm why O'Connor met with a Parkinson specialist earlier this year. Are you concerned that the White House is not giving specifics on this, or do you have any questions about the president's health? Well, first... I mean, James Comer goes from one uh, tinfoil hat conspiracy theory hearing to the next. I mean, it's been a constant attack on President Biden this entire time. He can't hold an honest hearing um, and he hasn't been able to the entire time he's been leading the oversight committee. So I, I, I don't trust James Comer at all to do anything that's actually legitimate or being done the right way. This is the same person that attacks uh, uh, scientists and Dr. Fauci, the same person that brings literally spies uh, and people that have been discredited uh, to as, and, and to serve as witnesses in our committees. And so, no, I don't support James Comer and his endless investigations of, of Joe Biden. Um, as far as the, the president's health, uh, he's he's spoken to that. Right. Um, his physician has put out that information. I trust the president. He's fighting back. He's doing great. Yes, he had a, a bad debate night. We all know that, but we're moving forward and we're going to beat Donald Trump in November. Moments ago, Patty Murray, President Pro Tem of the Senate, just put out this statement on the president, quoting from a piece of it. More than a week since the debate and after talking with my constituents, I believe President Biden must do more to demonstrate he can campaign strong enough to beat Donald Trump. There is such a case to be prosecuted against Donald Trump. President Biden has to lead the charge in making that case. Senator John King joins us now with some thoughts on that. John? Anderson, that is a senior Democratic lawmaker from a very blue state out on the West Coast, a former colleague, close colleague of Joe Biden in the United States Senate before he was vice president, saying, Mr. President, you have to do more. Not saying Mr. President gets out. The conversation you just had was so telling. You know, President Biden is playing, uh, trying to keep the support of his friends in the Black Caucus. He's trying to keep that support because it's such a foundational element of the Democratic Party. And it causes strife for other lawmakers. If the Black Caucus stays with the president, it's hard for many other Democrats to stand up and say, get out. But you have Democrats who are looking at all the data, and now a member of the Senate leadership, who does not want Republicans to take charge of the Senate, saying, Mr. President, you need to lead the charge. What does she mean by that? You need to change the numbers. That's what she's saying. They want to see the numbers in the polling change. They want to see it fast, Anderson. And that's hard to do. The president this morning said it's just the elites in the Democratic Party trying to push him out. But I'm just back from another trip on the road, Anderson. I want to take you to Wisconsin. 
right? And I want to show you, here's Milwaukee down here. This is blue. The president has to win here. Then you go just north of Milwaukee. You get to Ozaki County. Just over the line down here is a little town called Cedarburg. This used to be reliably red country. If you see in the county, Trump got 55% last time. By, Trump struggled, struggles in the suburbs. Cedarburg is right down here. We spent some time with voters. They are not elites, Anderson. Many of them Democrats. Many loyal Biden voters. Many of them say, Mr. President, please think about getting out. Cedarburg, Wisconsin, the 4th of July. The city's legendary parade runs two hours, as middle America as it gets. Locals call Cedarburg a living Hallmark movie. Picturesque, polite. Gina Salento was parade grand marshal this year. All right. And carries the keep it civil theme over to her growing pickleball studio. It just really is uh, a place for people to forget what's going on in the real world, and they can focus on just having fun and getting along. You think they need a place to forget what's going on in the they real do. world? Why? They do, because it's extremely, you know, people have these anger issues. Um, it's so polarizing what's going on. Yes, signs of polarization even here. But anxiety among Democrats is what jumps out now. I think that last week hurt so much that he's really got to think of the party and the country before he thinks of himself. Lisa and Troy Reisman own a moonshine business, are Biden voters, and are still stunned by his debate disaster. Quite frankly, I didn't even finish watching. I was really having a hard time watching it. And yeah, it was definitely scary. The first people that I called were my parents who are really old. And yeah, I said, what did you guys think about that? Because obviously, I still know where I'm going to vote, where my vote's going to lie. But they don't. And they, they were equally as scared. Tiny Cedarburg, population 12,000, is a new battleground community within one of America's most competitive ground states. Not long ago, it voted lopsided Republican, but Donald Trump struggles in America's changing suburbs. He won Cedarburg in 2016, but with just 55 percent. Joe Biden won in 2020, just barely, by 19 votes. Biden's voters say a repeat win here suddenly feels less likely. We just need fresh leadership, new leadership, and somebody who's a little bit more I like Joe Biden as a, as a person, you know, I think he, he stands for good things, but I'm just not sure he's, he's there anymore to lead the country. Think of the future. Think of um, our kids and grandkids, and maybe you should step aside only because there's a, this future doesn't look too, too bright with the other side taking over. Alan Navarella is a fiscal conservative and social liberal. Hi hey guys, how you doing? Like many here, disgusted with the choices. There's something wrong. Are we going to keep going for the better of two evils? I mean, it's, something's going to change. We need a logical party. We need an independent party that makes sense. Naparella leans Biden because he can't vote for Trump. It's embarrassing how he speaks to people, how he treats people, how he responds to other countries. What was going through your mind watching the debate? Watching Biden try to get through his words was just bad. Just bad. No, yeah, everybody has a bad day. I get it. I get it. But the thing is, is this was a time that you, was your time to shine. Did he look to you like someone who could serve for president for four and a half more years? I don't, I think that what's, let me put it this way, I'm voting for the party right now. Do you think Vice President Harris is qualified to be president? No, I don't think so. But you might vote for Joe Biden. Anyway. Before the debate, Naparella thought Biden could eat out another Wisconsin win. Now, big doubts. Yet he worries switching candidates might backfire. Who's going to do it? And, and it's so late in the election process that, you know, Trump will be a shoe in anyway. Naparella moved here to care for his aging mother. His wines are made in California and sold in small town Cedarburg with a flashy slogan that draws fewer complaints now than when he first opened shop five years ago. I've seen the demographic change a little bit. So now you're kind of getting on a, you know, an even keel between conservative and liberal. Gina Salento calls herself an independent libertarian, a good teacher, very competitive. A past Trump voter, very unhappy with the present. This is the best our country can do. There's certain things I feel just overall sadness for. And to me, the biggest issue is that a, a house divided cannot stand. That's just... There's truth to that, and I'm seeing our country erode and, instead of thrive.
Salento can't see herself voting Biden, but won't commit to voting Trump. Proof there, Biden's setbacks aren't automatically points for Trump. But in politics like pickleball, it helps to set the pace. Nothing interrupts treasured tradition here. But as the election year calendar turns another page, the mood change in this battleground is stunning. But John, the, the Biden campaign has a theory that voters who are concerned about Biden's health aren't going to turn around and vote for Trump. Does that theory capture the whole picture? It's a risky theory, Anderson. The Biden voters we spoke to, even the ones who said, please, Mr. President, step aside, say if he does not, they will vote for him in the end. But those are strong Biden voters. You're sure Troy Reisman there. He said he called his parents. They're still undecided. What are they going to do? In a place like Cedarburg, there are a lot of soft Republicans or independents who don't like Trump. But if they saw the debate and they're like, woof, people at a picnic approached me and said, woof, here's, here's the danger. If it's just Trump, Biden, sure, maybe they stay with Biden. But remember 2016? Third party candidates matter. Third party candidates matter. There are already one or two on the ballot in Wisconsin, several on the ballot in Michigan. If there are third party candidates on the ballot and you are demoralized and don't want to vote for Biden, you have an option. You will have an option. And we learned in 2016 that option can make the difference. And how critical is Wisconsin to Biden's path to victory? Uh, simple math. Let me pull out to the 2016 map. You see, Donald Trump wins Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. These three tend to go together. The three of them, they're Democratic states. The demographics are lined up. But Donald Trump flipped them, the great blue wall, right? And he's president of the United States. Joe Biden flipped him back, and he's president of the United States. Wisconsin, only 10 electoral votes. Yes, you can mathematically make it up somewhere else, but it's part of the Democratic blue wall. If you are a Democrat, you need it.